What's going on, everyone? Mario Pareca here, and today I'm super excited for this one because this is the first cooking and conversations that we've done that features dessert, and I love me some dessert. I mean, I don't always like to make dessert. I like the finished product, the final product, though, and we'll talk about that a little more as we get along, but I have Keisha Moore here, and she is the owner of Hummingbird Macarons and Desserts. You can follow her on Instagram, at Hummingbird Macarons. That's her handle on Instagram, and man, the stuff she posts. It makes me hungry all the time. It's so colorful and delicious looking. Kisha, what's up? What's up? This is I wanna... super fun. So, so we're going to do something. Oops, hold on a second. I'm losing. I may need to, I may need to charge my phone. But today, um, in, it's, it's Father's Day weekend coming up. So I yep. figured I put together a chocolate, um, like a chocolate rum brownie cake. I like all three of those things, and putting them together makes me like them even more. Good. So, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. I, I just want to let people know that you are live in your shop right now. And yes. so if they hear a little hiss in the background, that's because of the refrigeration that you have. So it's not their speakers. They don't need to adjust them. This is live. We're doing the live stream as we always do. So you know we're live on Facebook, YouTube. Twitter. We're live everywhere. So if you have any questions, comments, ideas, anything you want to ask Kisha about desserts, cakes, what she's doing, her macarons, which are fantastic. And I love the flavor combinations. We'll talk about that in a minute too. You can type yeah. them right in the comments and we can answer you. We're happy to do so. But um, let's kick it off. Kisha, why don't you get started with your cake? We'll talk about that a little bit. And then I got some questions I want to ask you. You got some questions to ask? Okay. So I just realized since we're live and I, this is just kind of like you know, how I do, I might have to um, get an extension cord to charge my phone because that's what happens <laughs> in real life. Um, so <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, you got to make sure you Sometimes, got the juice. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to put the cake together and then if I like, I'm going to switch off real quick and go grab a cord just so we can get started. So sorry guys, but that's life. And this is what happens in bakery world when there's a lot going on like today. Okay. All right. So. What I have is, um, what we make are like chocolate chiffon cakes. So they're a little lighter than like a regular pound cake type cake that I think is more um, maybe traditional, but I like chiffon cakes because you can usually infuse them with whatever flavor you want. So if you want to do like chocolate raspberry cake, you don't have to make 5 million cakes. So like we make a chocolate base and then we soak it with whatever we want to flavor it. And then it's all about what you fill it with that, that adds the excitement. Right, now, so let me ask you, what, what makes it a chiffon cake? What's the, what makes it a chiffon cake as opposed to a pound cake? What's the difference? Yeah, so chiffon cakes do not have um, butter. Uh, mm. So this one is made uh, with, we use canola oil. So it's oil, eggs, um, your eggs are added, all of your wet ingredients, and then all your dry ingredients are sifted together. You mix that, sift over the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. And then you whip egg whites. And so the egg mm. whites is really what creates that volume and height. So that lift. Um, huh? That lift. Yeah, it gives it that that lift and height. So that's and I just like I said, I, I love chiffon cakes. When I was a young pastry chef, I hated them though. Um, <laughs> because I'm like, I just I just can we just cream the butter and the sugar, put the eggs in, this is a faster process, and then we're done. And uh but the first place that I worked for, they made chiffons all the time. And then that ended up being the cake that I love the most. So that's what we do here as well. That's cool. That's one. Of, that's my secret. If, if you want to know, I'll give you a little secret for my pancakes. I add, I separate the whites and the yolks, add ah. the yolks, mix them into the batter. Then I whip the whites to like medium stiff peaks at yep. the very last minute, fold them in really lightly to the batter. And then you make your pancakes and you get that nice little airy, fluffy lift. Ah, I'm going to do that next time. <laughs> it's a little cheat code. <laughs> Go ahead and try so that. Great. And it doesn't matter if there's little speckles of white in it either. You want that because you want to keep the air in. I'm sure much like with what you're doing. Now, what is that you're putting on it? So what I'm doing here is I'm soaking the cake with um, some simple syrup. Gotcha. So it's just water and sugar cooked yeah, till the parts, sugar dissolves. Sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to soak that in, and then we're going to soak on top of that. We're going to add some uh, rum. I like how I was talking, and you're doing that, and I just stopped my sentence. I was like, what is that? <laughs> so 
So yeah, so now I'm gonna serve it with some rum. Oh yeah. You know, chocolate rum, brownie pieces. I mean I love it. And we're gonna leave this cake a little bit rustic. Usually like when you go when you all go to our um our Instagram or any social media, our cakes are very attention to detail, but I think like guys just kind of want to get in and, and, and just do a thing. Right. So we're going to really make this cake all about that. Nice. Okay? So let me ask uh, you this question in your bakery. So when you, yeah. so when, you stop, I'm no, go ahead. I was gonna say in your bakery, when you make these cakes, do you bake them in big sheet pans and then punch them out with molds or do you actually bake them in like rounds and then slice them in half? Okay, so the chiffons, because of how they are, we actually bake these in cake pans. Um, because all of our cakes that we make are rounds. We don't do um, square cakes or often. Um, but when we make our like carrot cakes or hummingbird cake uh, or like red velvet cake, we bake those in a rectangle, uh, in a sheet pan and we punch those out because they're a heavier cake. And so when you have a heavier cake, you want more surface tension. So oftentimes when people are baking their cakes that have butter in them or whatever, they're like, you know, my cake is dense. I just find that round um, cake pans, unless you put like a little bit in it, you don't get the rise that you really need. And then you've got to use different types of things to do that, like heat, heat pads around them or core. That's how people used to do things old school. So I just prefer that when it's a heavier cake, just put it in a sheet tray, fill it up, and then we punch it out. Nice. And then what do you do with all those little bits that are left over? Oh, from like if we punch out cake? Yeah. Then we make ice cream here, so then we put it in our ice cream. Oh, I love that too. But if, you know, if you're not going to be making ice cream, I mean, just just eat it. Yeah, you can eat it. Do you, have, do you make cake pops? No. You don't? No. Are you against? Are you against cake pops? I'm not against cake pops, but they're tedious to me. Yeah. Cake pops aren't like my idea of fun, but they are someone else's idea of fun. So I'm like, so when someone orders cake pops, we just have people that we refer to them. Gotcha. Um, we made them early on. I'm like, this is like, this is not fun for me. Yeah. It wasn't my idea of fun. It's got to be fun, right? What's your idea of fun? What do you get excited to make and to I do in your business? I excited about ice cream, um, cakes. Tarts, pies, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> you said ice cream twice. I think you're pretty excited about ice cream. And I also love ice cream. I have to say that. So while we... There, she's back. I, I, fill us in really quickly on... Back? Yeah, fill us in really quickly on what kind of... Um, what did you put on there? Because after you, so you soaked it with simple syrup, you soaked it with rum, then you piped on some oh, frosting yeah, so of some sort. Put, I put on a chocolate... Um, our chocolate buttercream. So that's what's going on top. Nice. And now I'm adding like this delicious brownie pieces. Mm. Now, is that just regular chocolate buttercream? Maybe it's the lighting, but it looks really dark from where I'm sitting. It is really dark. So what we, okay. we use, um, we use a Valrona cocoa powder, oh, which yeah. is um, exceptional and very dark. Um, and then that's pretty much what it is. It's, it's our recipe. Um, that I adjusted. I make like an Amer American, is what I call it, buttercream. Okay. And um, so it's it's um, it's a French buttercream and like an American hybrid. So it's not super sweet. It's like light and delicious because I don't like the sugary sugary of like our traditional buttercreams. But I also yeah. don't like the sometimes lack of flavor of European buttercreams. So mm -hmm. I was like, we're gonna do something to make this like the best of both worlds, and it is absolutely amazing. I love that because, you know, buttercreams are so delicious, especially when the butter that you're using is really good. And yes. there's a lot of body and texture and flavor to that. But there's a lot of places that if the ingredients aren't super high end or whatnot, they'll use a lot of sugar to, to compensate so that it the just tastes like for. sweet. And then it's like, eh, it leaves that film it's in your okay. mouth. There's no yeah. yeah, there's no flavor to it. You can't enjoy it. So we use a butter that has 83% fat in it. Mm. And, um, and you can just tell a difference. And yes, it costs a little bit more, but you know, we've had discussions before when it comes to flavor, I just don't think that you can compromise. So I agree. Um, flavor, fat, whatever ingredients you use, I, I, I believe that it should be, um, 
top notch. I know someone says that if you wouldn't drink it, then you shouldn't use it. Well, I feel the same about your ingredients. If you wouldn't really eat it, like when you taste something that has an imitation vanilla versus like a pure vanilla, there's just no comparison. Don't ever go back. You don't ever want to go back to that. Yep. And I mean, that's so why your brand is what it is, right? That's why your brand, that's why your brand is what it is because Absolutely. you don't compromise. I mean, I personally as a consumer would rather pay a little bit more and get a really delicious product than save some money and be like, eh, it was just okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So pretty much everything that we use, we, we try to make most everything in house. It's rare, you know, our jams are made, our caramels are made, our buttercreams are made. Everything that you cut that you get has been made here. Um, Pretty much. We don't make sprinkles. So that might be the only thing. <laughs> I'm going to, and, uh, and alcohol. We don't make that either. So I'm going to soak this again with some more rum. Nice. Now that's a nice dark rum I can see. It is a nice dark rum. I like that. It's a good dark rum, but since I'm, since we're not promoting that, that company, we can't say whose it is. No, but we can say dark rum. Get yourself a nice dark rum. Get yourself a nice dark rum. It's so deep and flavorful. What we're doing here is because, because we have these, the, the brownies on top, we want mm -hmm. our next layer to, to make sure that it sticks and glues to it without really breaking it off. And so I'm just putting dollops of the more of the buttercream so we can make sure that that happens. So we'll have a nice sandwich seal. It'll keep the layers even too, right? Uh-huh. So now we're going to put that yeah, on. Yeah. Can you see how that... That's one this of the most like... delicious looking sandwiches I've ever seen. So I put the I put the lid on and there's so see we're gonna keep oh, that man. looking like that. I love we're not it. Gonna, we're gonna so that you can see what's going on in this case, okay? If you like chocolate, that's like heaven. Oh, this is heaven. With a nice cool <laughs> glass of milk, if you if you're if you're if you drink milk or you get some lactose free milk, whichever, we're gonna soak some mm -hmm. more rum on there. How many layers are you gonna do on this? We're gonna do four. Whoa. I'm so angry that I'm not there right now. Because three just wouldn't be enough. But but if I was there, you probably wouldn't get four layers because I'd probably be eating your mise en place as you're making it. I <laughs> know you wouldn't. <laughs> I'd give you the eye. <laughs> no, don't give me the eye, please. Don't give me the eye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but yeah, those like I I could see like taking a piece of that brownie and just squeezing some of that buttercream right on it and it's like man i could sit in front of the tv and do that all day mm -hmm. it would it wouldn't be good for me but i could do it yeah it wouldn't be good for you <laughs> or oh, it would man. be good for you so look so i've got some pretty exciting things that have happened lately yeah tell me um so last week um there was an article in huffington post mm-hmm and, um, and so it was like the top 24, they did like black bloggers and, and chefs to follow. And we were mm -hmm. mentioned in there. Congratulations. That's awesome. Pretty cool, huh? That is. I'll have to, if we'll find that article, I'll we'll have to link out to it so people can check it out. Okay. So now we've soaked this one. We're going to do some more. More buttercream. Some more buttercream. Now, how rich is this cake? This is an eight inch. No, no I mean, how rich is it? Make, like, um, uh, I'm sorry. how how I rich is it? Up, you're breaking up on me a little bit. Technical difficulties. Give me one second. How rich is this cake? Yeah. Big in terms of like size around. <laughs> Let's just let the internet figure itself out. Then I'll ask you again. Keep making your cake. Mm -hmm. And add some more brownie pieces. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Now, am I still breaking yeah. up or can you hear me? Can I what? Can you hear me? You're still breaking up on me. Nope. Okay. Give me a second. I can't hear you. I'm getting feedback. Can you hear me fine? I can hear you fine, yeah. I wonder, is it me? 
<laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I'm like, I can't. Hold on a second. Because I'm like, what happens if I just click off of here? I can't leave because I'm the host. If I leave, then we're going to lose the feed. I can't. Yeah, I'm getting feedback from somewhere. So, but can I pause for a second? Yeah. Sorry, guys. My I'll keep I'll keep, I'll keep talking. Hopefully you can hear me. Guys, if you can hear if you can't hear me on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or wherever or wherever you're listening to this, post in the comments and let me know because I can see and hear everything fine, so I think I'm good on my end. So, let me know if you can hear me. But what we've what we were doing and she'll be back in one second is she's making her cake. And this is a great Father's Day cake. This is something you can do at home and you don't have to like you can make a chocolate cake, some chocolate buttercream, which is super, super easy to make some brownies. You can even get some brownies if you don't want to make cake and brownies and put this together in the way that she's showing you with the simple syrup and the rum and the buttercream. And it's just it's a really delicious way. It's almost like a um, almost like a trifle type thing where you would make it in like a bowl with like cake shred you crumble cake and use different like either frosting or whipped cream and berries and things like that. But um what Kish is doing is she's doing this for Father's Day and it's like a super chocolatey chocolate cake which is going to be super delicious. And she's soaking the layers with rum and with um simple syrup and so that's just going to make the cake extra moist. And the cake is already moist and really, really delicious, but that's going to give it a little bit. One of my favorite cakes, right, is this. Um, I, I like poke cakes because of that reason. Sometimes when you make cakes, if you over bake them or you do them a little differently or don't follow the instructions to the T for whatever reason, or, you know, they can be as 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 um, fragile as where you are at sea level. So cakes can come out all different. And if you make a cake and it tends to be a little bit dry, it's really not that much fun, right? But if you make something like a poke cake or even do what Kisha was showing us and what she's doing, and she'll be back in a second to, to continue it, you can keep your cake extra moist. And if you use like a simple syrup like she was using, it doesn't include, it doesn't add any additional flavor. It'll add some sweetness, but it won't add any additional flavor to your actual cake. So you can just simply, if you're doing multiple layers, add the simple syrup between the layers and they'll keep the cake nice and rich and moist. Now, one of my favorite cakes is a coconut cake. And you can do that, that same thing with that. If you make like a white cake and you poke it, poke little holes throughout it. So I think people sometimes use the back of like a wooden spoon. You can add um, coconut milk and some condensed sweetened condensed milk to that. And that cake will just soak that up. And then when you add your buttercream or your like whipped frosting on top of that, it's super, super delicious and keeps it super moist. So, those are different things you can do with cakes. And that's why I like what she's showing because when you add the brownies to the center, like she's showing us, those brownies are a little more dense. Brownies are more dense than cake. So when you have brownies in the center and dotted with um, buttercream, when you cut that, you're going to have this really rich, moist cake with layers of a little more dense brownie and um, buttercream in the center. So not only does it look delicious because I love that, that look too, that she's giving it, she's not like coating the outside with frosting and doing all these things to it, but she is. Um, so I, I just like it. She's keeping it rustic, keeping it fun. So for father's day, you can go ahead and create something very similar to this. Um, if your dad likes chocolate, if you're celebrating or heck, if you like chocolate, go ahead and do it for yourself. But, um, so that's, that's what we're doing here with Kisha. Um, so any questions you have, anything you want to ask again, we are on live stream. She had to jump off for a second. She was getting some feedback and I know she wanted to plug her device in. So that's where she went again. These are live. These are live and in-person live streams. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can go and uh, check it out on the live stream and see what we're doing. She's showing you the cake and she is back now. So I'm going to bring Kisha back to finish making this cake that I've just been talking about and chatting about. There she is. You're back. Can you hear me again? I'm back. I can hear you great now. Excellent. Sorry about that. No, we are good. I was just talking about your cake that you're making and you know how I love the 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 method that you're using and how I love how like the denseness of the brownies fills in between the layers of the actual cake which you're soaking with some rum and simple syrup and that's going to keep it moist and more flavorful. I just I love it. 
And I was saying that it kind it kind of reminds me a little bit of a poke cake without the poking. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just that's just me. But my whole pastry, but like I took a pastry class in college because uh -huh. I, when I was in culinary school, so we took a pastry baking and pastry class, and I have to say it was one of my least favorite classes, only because I don't have the patience. You have to weigh everything out. And then once you do that, like when we're making breads, for instance, we'd have to put them in the proofer and then you walk away for two to four hours and then you come back later, reproof it. And it's like, it was like a whole day thing. Now, the one thing, the one story I did get from pastry class is when we made donuts, that was my jam. I was like, they needed someone to fry the donuts. I'm like, I can do this. This is my thing. So I spent all day frying donuts. Yeah. And for every batch that came out, I ate a donut. And after that, I didn't want to look at another <laughs> donut for like two years. Yeah. You said that was your jam, huh? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I was like, I can do that. That's like cooking. I can do that. Like, I, I mean, I could do it. the other stuff too. I just don't like what you do. Kisha is like, you have so much, you have to have so much patience. And you have to be so meticulous and measured. Like when I'm in the kitchen cooking, I can just grab stuff and be creative and start mixing things together, taste it, adjust it, fix it. And I would tell my cooks when I was a chef, I'd say, look, unless you burn it beyond belief, I can fix it. So don't be afraid and don't hold yourself back, you yeah. know, but in baking, like if you don't mix the cake batter, right, there's no fixing it. You have to start over. Yeah. There's no, there's no burning beyond belief. And then we're going to make it work again. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it That's takes a not, whole, whole different level of patience. Yeah. I, um, so when I went to culinary school, I thought that I would, I mean, I cook and I think I, I cook very well. Um, I thought that I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do both, but eventually one does one out over the other. And so now I, you know, cook more at home, but baking to me just, it satisfies me artistically. It satisfies that, that place where. I still get to be creative, um, but it really is a start to finish thing. It's, it's just, it's just over. It satisfies so many things about what I like. And then just seeing people's reaction when they see it done. Um, yeah. It just brings me a lot of joy. I like the experience of what I do. Um, besides it being like sweet and good and yeah, you know, we, I think we occupy both two sides of the same coin. You need the food and you need the sweet. Yes, absolutely. Let me ask you this. Like when you're do, do you have days where you're like, you just want to get things done and they're just dragging out and you're like, man, I just gotta, like, I gotta wait for this. And then I gotta measure this and I gotta do this. Like when you have those days, how do you overcome that? How do you stay focused? So I think it's just a matter of, so it's just a matter of discipline. When I come in, this is all I'm doing. So mm -hmm. I don't think about, you know, I, I, and just like I tell my team that whatever happened outside of this door, you have to check it right there. Because I do believe that, especially with baking, I'm not so sure how it is with cooking. I don't believe it's the same thing. But with baking, I think that your emotions affect what comes out. And I've seen it in my team. They'll come in going through stuff. And I'm like, I need you to deal with that because they'll start messing stuff up. They'll start misweighing things. Things are because they haven't, they've got to, you know, settle their mind to come bake. When you come to bake because of the precision, because of all those things, you can't be all over the place in your emotions. Mm -hmm. So you see that? Oh man, that's, that is a nice, th 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 that like, it looked like the first two layers you had like cut in half. Oh, I am going to cut this Oh, you're going to, no, <laughs> leave it. Why are you going to cut it? <laughs> Don't do it. Going with this. This is colossal cake. Okay. So this I, is like, you know, dad's like, everybody go to bed. Dad needs to have a moment. You can have a sliver and I'm going to eat the rest of it. Pretty much that's what this cake is. Okay. Now, what I was asking you before we kind of lost a little lost touch there for a minute when we had tech issues was how rich is this cake? Um, you might want to run before dessert, <laughs> after dessert. <laughs> and maybe wake up when you get ready to have the midnight snack and do a couple of sit-ups. But I'm not saying that to anybody that they have to, but if that's a concern for you, you might want to. So from my perspective and just watching you do this, while it looks delicious and I wish so badly that I could try it right now, it looks like it's not a cake that I'm going to sit and eat like half of it in one sitting, right? <laughs> You're going to have to pace yourself as you eat this. 
Yeah, but it might be a kid that keeps calling your name. D you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're definitely going to want to um, pace yourself through the process. But, uh, I mean, it depends on how much of a chocolate eater you are. I feel the same way about just... So I think a lot of people think that I must consume dessert all the time, mm -hmm. but I don't. Like, it is... Um, there's a side in me that when I'm working, this is definitely work, right? I'm tasting to make sure it's good. Is this what it needs to be? All right, we're good. Everything's fine, blah, blah, blah. And then if I go to a party and someone has ordered a, des a dessert from us and I'll sit down and be like, oh my gosh, this is so incredible. This is so good. And they're like, well, don't you eat that or taste it every day? And I'm like, yeah, but it's not the same when I'm relaxing and eating it. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same as like, I don't, um, the thought of like, people coming in getting a dozen macarons, they'll leave, come back within the hour, get another dozen. They will consume them all, 12, right? And like, I came back because I need more. And I'm looking at them like, oh my gosh, did you have water in between? <laughs> did you get something to drink? Did you eat? Did you go for a walk? What happened? So I get it. I would probably yeah. do that. I would probably yeah. eat them all. I may eat them before I leave and just keep ordering them. <laughs> <laughs> Hand me so, one, I eat it. Just keep handing them to me and I'll keep eating them. Yeah. So this, what I like to show, like when I'm doing this, like cakes like this, this is kind of sometimes just being creative with cake, right? Like someone who's watching this could be like, you can make this this weekend. This is a cake that anybody can make this weekend. Listen, I'm not going to judge. If you've got to go to the store and buy a cake that the store made, I'll tell you something. Can I tell you a funny story? Please. So... There are mishaps that we had. Now, this is a long time ago. I do not do this now. This is when I was young, starting out. I've had a couple of mishaps. Life happens. And, um, and I, I needed to make this cake. I went to the grocery store, scraped off all of their icing. I kid you not, this is <laughs> I'm sharing this live. But I scraped off all of their icing and filled it with, like, my icing and it basically enhanced that cake um, yeah. because I needed to. These are things that happen. And hey, I want to say hi to Deb. Deb just said hi. She's joining in from Columbus, Georgia. So what's going Columbus, on, Deb? Georgia. I know where that is. My sister lives in Augusta. Nice. Sounds good. She must be traveling. Deb's originally, she's from Ohio, but she must okay. be traveling this week. Oh. So great to meet you Deb, or have you join us again deb um so to your story i love that story that you just told because those are the real things that happen and you have to make it happen when you're in a kitchen i remember there was a time when i was working on um, the roast station and things just kind of spiraled out of control it was so busy and <laughs> don't my chef wasn't there <laughs> he wasn't there this night so if he's watching this he's gonna probably get, say something but in any case um, I remember being back, we had an industrial strength microwave and uh -huh. we were taking filet mignons, searing them on the grill and throwing them in the microwave and finishing them. And that's how we had to do it to get them out and get them done. You'd hit them with some yes. butter and some herbs and get them out the door. Yes. And that was what we were so far. We were just getting crushed. We were behind. We had to get food out and nobody sent any back. So I mean, we did what we had to do. Is it right? No. And these are like... You know, I mean, what did, what did um, Anthony Bourdain at Kitchen Confidential? Yeah. Right? There, there's, I mean, yep. that that happened when it happened. I, I didn't, like, hide it. I had to address it, right? I mean, it happened. Mm -hmm. um, but it really is, there are mishaps that happen in a kitchen on your way to get things right. Now, what we do is we rebake it. You know, mm -hmm. and now I'm like, I'm in a place to rebake it. Back then, I was starting off as a new chef, you know, young. Mm -hmm. Uh, I always say young and dumb, but young and uninformed. <laughs> but hungry. You were hungry. So, I was young, uninformed, and hungry. That's it. And, um, and, and, and didn't really think to, like, make extra cake. Like, the things that we do now, right? Yeah. Because you're not thinking. You're thinking, how could it possibly be a mishap? I'm on my game. I know what I'm doing. I made cake. And, and so that didn't happen. What happened in that particular day, my daughter um, was going to a, a wedding rehearsal, and in my mind, I saw this happening. My, my mom was supposed to take the cake. She put it in the passenger floor, which is what you should do. Mm -hmm. Not thinking that my daughter was going to run to the passenger side door. Not the back seat where she was supposed to be, but the front seat. I see where this is going. Opened it up and stepped on this cake. Oh. 
Oh man. In the box. What a nightmare. So I could just feel see like seeing that, not being able to stop it, and just feeling your stomach drop. Oh. <laughs> it's like no. Yeah. Yep. Right? It's like, all <laughs> slow motion. <laughs> no, don't go. Uh huh. And then it was yep. it was over. Yes, I. I remember another story when we were in the kitchen. We had this really, we had a chef's table. So the, the people that were eating were actually in the kitchen. And <laughs> yeah, and it was like custom menu and everything was, everything was like done up. And you, cause when you have a custom menu like that, you have one shot. And if it doesn't work, then you're, you're pretty much done. So one yeah. of the garnishes for the soup was puffed rice. And how you make puffed rice is you cook it the night before and then you dehydrate it overnight. Then okay. you drop it in the deep fryer right before, and it puffs up. Well, yeah. well the, sh the cook that was doing that, who's one of the most talented cooks I've ever worked with, she dropped it all in the deep fryer at once, and it all just sunk. It didn't work. It didn't do anything. It just sunk. And I watched it. My eyes got real big, and I'm like, uh-oh. Because <laughs> it's like, you got to deep fry. So she looks at me, and she's like, what do I do? And I'm like, just put rice in there. She's like, what do I do? I was like, just get any rice and put it in there and see what happens. So we're both like... Jen, doing the side of the cross and praying and she's dropping it in and it worked it worked it popped up it worked and we got and then at the end of the night we cleaned the fryer and there was just burnt rice coating the bottom of the fryer it was bad but god was with us and he made it happen but so deb's well, asking isn't it funny, isn't it funny when you're saving a day you don't care what yeah. you have to clean up afterwards you don't care oh, yeah. the whole like you no. don't care the whole place is like Stuff on the floor. We will clean it afterwards. Right now, yeah. we're on mission. Save the day. Save this. Yeah. Day. Save this moment. Save whatever and do it. Yeah, you start like bargaining with God. You're like, God, if you just make this come out right and this works, I will mop the entire floor. I will clean this place top to bottom. I will do. I'll, I'll clean. Two in the morning. Yeah. Care. I'll do whatever it takes. Just please, please make this rice puff. But um, so Deb says she's at a client location. She's so hungry. So this cake came at the perfect timing. And uh -huh. now she's she's loving the dessert in the show. She also asked the question, what is the liquid that you're pouring on top? So she must have joined us just now. Okay. So you can go. So this one is, I'm trying to, okay. Yep. This That's one it. is simple syrup. So it's just equal parts sugar and water. Um, and then this one is um, rum. Dark so rum. The thing about simple syrup when you're making a chiffon cake is that, like if I wanted to make this chocolate raspberry, then I would take like raspberry essence, put it in my simple syrup, soak my cake with that, and then put raspberries inside or jam or whatever. If I want to make this a chocolate hazelnut cake, same thing. Simple syrup, hazelnut, soak the cake. So the great things about chiffon is that they can take and absorb pretty much whatever you put in it. So, um, so I know that uh, Mario had asked earlier, like how, what goes into preparation, how do we prep things? But that allows you to prep up these cakes. And no matter what someone orders, if it's chocolate and they want it soaked with whatever, black pepper, we got you. You want what? Yeah, we got you. We got whatever you want. It's gonna, we're gonna put it in this cake. So that helps us um, keep our production consistent and mm -hmm. yeah, and be well prepared. And you know what? You take a little bit of that simple syrup, you take a little bit of soda water, a little bit of that rum, and you got yourself a cocktail while you're doing this. I'd even put some little hey. bit of coke, little bit of coconut in that. You're it's golden. You're good to go, huh? Oh yeah. Now, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're gonna finish the top of this with more chocolate. It's a little cold. It's interesting. It's cold out for it. I don't know how the weather is there where you are, but it's like seventies. Yeah, 75 here. Okay, I'm not used to being like that during the, this time of the year. Mm -hmm. so now, let me ask Let me ask you this question. When it comes to, yeah. like, temperature and where you are in the world and all of those things, how does that affect how your cakes bake and how your pastries behave? Well, ideally, um, you want your everything to be at room temperature. So, like, when I make any kind of, like, traditional cream cake with butter or whatever – I want all those ingredients to be room temperature. The pastry shop itself should be pretty cool. Like you don't want a hot pastry shop. Trust me, I've worked in my fair share of them. It is no fun, okay? So <laughs> ingredients at room temperature, pastry shop, cool. <clears throat> because you're working with chocolates, 
or, you know, like I said, buttercreams. And so if it's too warm, like one of the places I was, your buttercream becomes soup. And you've got to work on all these things to compensate for that. Have iced water baths to make sure, you know, the buttercream gets to the stiff consistency. I have ice cakes and walk-in coolers because, you, <laughs> you know, it's too hot in the shop. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, ideally you want it nice and cool with your ingredients at room temperature. This cake looks so good. It does. So what I've done here, I like to, to show people, you know, the aesthetic sometimes like day, day and age as pastry chefs, we're like all about precision, the nice glaze. How does this look? Oh, this looks amazing. And we're doing all of these things. But I want to show how you can take something as rustic as this and really make it absolutely amazing and delicious and something, again, that you can do at home. Bake a cake, buy a cake, trick a cake, whatever you need to do, this can be your cake. And then get the brownie pieces, soak it up, do some nice little swirl design. Like I call this the old school icing design. Like you learned when you were a kid because you didn't know how to smooth things out of icing it. So you did that. You did this, that little, that design. I love that. And I like the way that looks because when I'm eating a cake, I like to taste the cake too. I mean, I feel like a lot of places put so much icing on their cakes that it's hard yeah. to sometimes find the cake. And I yes. like cake. So, I mean, I yeah. want some icing. Don't get me wrong. It adds to it. But yeah. I think it should be proportioned, right? Yeah, because you don't want it to say icing, right? Yeah. I, I, like, I like a good balance of cake, too. I'm the same way. So, I um, I love – I'm like, this is, like, so much fun. I'm thinking, you know, this is going to be – yeah, this is, like, the new rustic look. I like it. All right. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to show – I'm going to – this is how – this is where I get to have fun. This is the creative side. When the creative juices flow, we get the jazz at the top. Add some stuff to it. If you want to get outrageous, I wish I had a donut to put on here because now you've got me thinking about like, that would be really over the top if I had a donut to put on here. Do you make donuts at your shop? No. <laughs> wow, that was aggressive. <laughs> donuts are like a whole other world. I think that people who jump on 50 million band rag wagons in their shop are sometimes at asking for trouble. You know, every... Yeah. I had a friend, every new trend that came out, she was like, we're doing this this week. And I'm like, I don't even know how you're making it. That, that's a recipe for disaster. You've got to know what you, know who you are, know what footprints you want to leave, and then do that and do the best at that. So I love a good donut. Um, I have no desire to add that production to this space at all, ever. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Ever. I, there's, a local, um, there's a local bakery from my hometown that – they're a bakery and that's what they're that's what they started as and that's what you know predominantly they do but they started doing these donuts and they're not really donuts they're like um they're a longer donut they're not a circle they're long and they cut them in half like a sandwich and then they fill them with buttercream and now that's like people will come from far and wide just to get those that's like what they're known for um, above yeah, all their other pastries and such. For themselves, right? They, like, yeah. they created a niche. They weren't following some trend. They're going to keep revamping over and over yep. again. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to... Look, I'm, I'm like, where's my camera? I see you. You're good. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> You're hiding behind so, that delicious cake, but that's okay. <laughs> so <laughs> That's a good shot right there. Um, I'm going to just do some... Thanks, Deb. We appreciate you. Deb just said, Deb just said, this has been so entertaining and relaxing. She left one client and has a late night client call. And this conversation that we're having was exactly what she needed to chill and enjoy. Thank she, so she said, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad. So, we're happy okay, you were here, Deb. Yes. But one more right there. I always like to bring along some macarons. I, I have no problem with that. So we're going to put one like right here. What flavor is that one? This one is chocolate birthday. Mm. And then we're going to put a Nutella one right here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then we're going to add some pearls. Because this is Father's Day. Why is it that when we think about men, we think about chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> right? We oh, love it. Of men, we think, okay, they, they're going to want chocolate, but what if they don't? They don't want chocolate. But anyway, they're going to have chocolate this weekend. So yeah. we're going to put these chocolate curls up here. I know, for, I know, for instance, my dad 
loves to, like chocolate is like his thing. Like he'll get triple chocolatey, chocolatey, chocolate, uh, everything. He loves it. Yeah. So he would this cake. It's that would be right up his alley. He'd be like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. We're gonna add some more like brownie pieces on here. Yes. Because you don't know what part of the cake you're gonna get, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me mention one one other thing I love about this cake, Kisha, is that. It like I like things because from the cooking perspective, we're always talking about um, you know how things are aesthetically, how they look, and what the presentation's like. And you try to get a combination of colors and textures and shapes and all those different things. But I tend to gravitate because it's so different and unique towards the things that are like predominantly one color with sprinkles of other little things. So like this, it's all chocolate with like those two little macarons on top that are like. Con contrasting i i love the look of this yeah i um i i like texture yeah i like the texture not just when i eat but i like texture aesthetically when i'm looking at something yep. I, I want there to be even if it's monochromatic i want there to be something that someone thought about oh my gosh they just added like you know this this piece of chocolate right there you know mm -hmm. and now we've got some height we've got some some extra height we've got this going on We've got chocolate here, and and this cake just made me happy. Yeah, you know, I'm happy. This cake is making. <laughs> this was this is fun. So it's like, so it's like this, and and let's see, you can we can get the designs on here. See that? Look at that. It's beautiful. You need to take a picture of this for Instagram, by the way, before you I cut am. it. I mean, that's oh, before it, I cut it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, before, during, and after, preferably. Well, look, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should, I'll cut it from behind because I'm on my phone. And if I take my phone off, you guys won't see me. And that's then a good point. To, like, yeah, that's a good point. Right? You know so, better than like, I, I do. I need to eat this live so you <sighs> can see my expression when I get into it. And so Mario it. can be uber jealous. And I already am. He can't take it anymore. It'd be so hilarious if we had set this up where it looks like, like you're live. And I took a bite and you came here as if you drove in your car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about ready to get in my car and just. Come to get that cake right now. Oh, it looks that good. <laughs> yeah, I could could defy the law of physics to get there for that motive. Motivated by that cake. So, I'm gonna cut into the back of this because yeah. I am salivating, and since I don't, I don't have to worry you. about whether or not anyone else is, I'm gonna cut this. I brought. I, I've got a plate here. Let me just grab something to wipe this off. Deb, thank you for joining us. I'm happy you're happy. Deb said she's happy too, so that's good. I hope everyone oh, watching this is happy. There's nothing okay, like a so giant gonna, chocolate cake. Huh? There's nothing like a giant chocolate cake. Nothing. It's gargantuan. You know what it kind of reminds me of? Did you ever see that movie Matilda? Yes. Did you see oh, the part yes. where he's eating the chocolate cake? Yeah. They make him eat yes. the whole cake. <laughs> big here I'm, I'm probably <laughs> how do you cut yeah. something like that well because i'm trying to keep it so i can take a picture of it in the back and be really neat about it i didn't cut it very cute like um it's still four. gonna be delicious oh it's it is gonna be delicious so i've got all that the so i've got rum soaked in it we've got it smells so good. Let me ask it, you this. It smells like a chocolate dream. Have you ever made this specific cake before? Mm hmm You have? <laughs> is it? No. Have you made this cake before, or is it that mm -hmm, just because it's so good? No. Oh, oh, no. I'm sorry. It's good. I'm having a moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I... Yes, I have made this cake before. Not gotcha. with the brownies in it, though. Mm. So I did one. I um, We have a chocolate obsession cake, mm -hmm. but I didn't soak it with rum. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking I might need to soak it with rum or bourbon mm -hmm. or some kind of thing. Um, yeah. Because that just really took it up another notch. And it's just something really great about having like, you know, like like brownies have that nice chewy kind of texture. Mm -hmm. And then you get that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, my gosh. And then you get like the. Oh, my gosh. This is like. Then you get like that, that the cake texture. 
That rum is so good. Make sure you get good rum. Got to be good rum. Good rum. Yep. This is so good. Now, the the rum that you used, let me ask you this. The rum that you used, was that straight out of the bottle? It was just straight up rum. You didn't do anything to it. You didn't. Nope. Okay. I'm sorry. Look. No, I'm don't sorry, be. Sorry. Don't be sorry. I'm sorry that I'm not getting any. That, Mario, that's, it hurts me. I wish you were here. I do too. That cake is like Did phenomenal. Because Ugh. the rum with this cake. Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> it's, it looks great. No. Let me ask. That's it. Let's talk about this a little bit while you're enjoying your cake after we, we just made this and it looks so delicious and you're having a good time. Tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial background because there's a lot of, you know, chefs, pastry chefs. You could have just gone and worked at a high end property, you know, still been creative, still been baking had maybe a little more security because you knew that you had a job and a paycheck, but you have much like me, that entrepreneurial spirit where you wanted to go do your thing and you wanted to do it your way and have that freedom, but that creative, the creative freedom too. Tell us a little bit about that. So I do, I, I do know after having been in business for some time, that there's nothing wrong with wanting to work for somebody. And I think oftentimes that people feel like they've got to always be the one who owns something, but you, everyone's not cut out for this. Um, so uh, oftentimes people think like, oh, there's, you know, she's a pastry chef. I went to, I, I wanted to learn some very foundational things. I've always wanted to be an owner, a business owner. And, and so it just made sense for me to get a background where I could understand what I want to do. And I've always baked. Okay. Running a company is important to me because I like creating jobs. I think there's, there's something honorable, honorable about owning a company, about running a company, providing um, resources and jobs for people, being able to be creative, yes, and allow other people to have a space where they can be creative. Um, that's really what I enjoy about what I do. I want to, you know, make the world sweeter. That's my tagline. Um, and so... Um, having a company where people can come and get exquisite desserts. And one of the things that was really like something, uh, another thing that was important was that I hated going places where I'd have dessert. And for example, they'd say chocolate cake, but it just tasted like brown vanilla cake. And, and I mean, it had no, there's no chocolate. I'm like, there needs to be a place where people can go and truly have dessert. So, um, and so that was really what I wanted to create a dessert experience. So that's, yeah. I love what you just said there about creating an experience because I think that's the key. I mean, no matter what business you're in or what brand you have, like when you look at the big luxury brands like the Rolex, the Louis Vuitton, the Ritz Carlton, the Rolls Royce, they, you know, at the end of the day, those are like watches, handbags, hotels, uh, things like that. You don't need to go that far, but the experience makes you want to. It's not the right. product, it's the experience that that product gives you. So if you focus yeah. much like you do with your desserts on the customer experience from eating your dessert, experiencing it, what it feels like to walk into your shop, to be taken care of really well, you pay really good attention to them, give them the best dessert they've ever had that's very balanced, flavorful, delicious, very high. Like That's an experience that you'll pay for time and time again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and then because you know that you're going to get a good, a good quality product, you know, yeah. there's nothing worse than going to get, again, a dessert. I, I think the experience and the product have to be shared, right? That the, you, well, you can go, go into a dive and get a good sandwich, mm -hmm. but you won't have the experience that really makes that sandwich. I think, I think the ambiance of the experience makes the taste that much better, you know? Yep. So, um, but ultimately... I just want that if I'm going to have something that says this is what this is, that, that, that when you taste it, that's what it is. So if you eat, like for us, if it's our cakes or our macarons or our desserts, and we say this has raspberry in it, well, I want you to be able to say that had raspberry in it or, and not say, well, it has some red gelatinous stuff that I think was jam. It tasted tarty, but I can't really say that it was raspberry. It could have been strawberry. Shoot, it could have been tutti frutti. For all you can, you know, because it just, yep. they were just filling a bill and, and putting a label on it. 
So I really, um, I want people to have a true um, mouth party when it comes to dessert. I like it, a mouth party. Now, real, <laughs> another question I have for you is, you know, you make all kinds of desserts. You make cakes, you make pies, you know, all kinds of different things, macarons. Why do you have macaron in your name? And why is that like the king in your eyes when people come into your shop? Why is that important? Yeah, why is the macaron like the thing in your shop? So, um, well, our cakes are as well, but those are easier to display. For you know, the, the macarons for me were that you could get this two bite, sensational, extraordinary experience. And then if you decided, oh my gosh, I can also get that in the cake, you know, some people don't, then you haven't felt like you've overindulged. You know, you so you can have all of these 12 little bite-sized bites of all of these flavors and then be like, oh, and I want that in the cake too. Oh, I want that in this. So the macarons are really kind of like the lead, the leader, the lead into an experience um, that you're having here in the store. So... And also they were a challenge, you know, macarons, no one is going to be, there's not going to be 50 million macaron shops <laughs> up and down the street because um, they are, it is a laborious process. And, and it's, it speaks to what you talked about before. What makes it so is the extreme attention to detail. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to, you can't overmix that, not even an inch. You can, you can slightly overmix dough and kind of be okay with it. Macarons, uh-uh. Over mix it, start over from the beginning. There is not a, there's not a, there, the only place of true recovery probably in this process is when you're at um, the sugar water stage. We use, um, we do the sugar water um, boil initially. I'm very careful about that because people are like, oh, you do the Italian method. No, um, let me give a little lesson real quick about meringue if I can, okay? So oftentimes people have this conversation about macarons. They're like, oh, I use a French macarons the true french macarons we use french mer meringue and and so we use italian meringue it has nothing to do with the cookie itself it is the method in which you make the meringue okay everybody so whether you're using swiss meringue technic method a french meringue method or italian meringue method you are still making french macarons it is how you're making the meringue so with a french meringue you are whipping the whites and adding the sugar as the egg whites whip with Italian meringue, you're cooking the sugar and water together and then adding it slowly into the whip meringues. With Swiss meringue, you are mixing the egg whites and the sugar together and heating them over um, a, a water bath until, um, until the sugar has dissolved and then you're whipping it together. It is just the technique of how you're making the meringue. It has nothing to do with the cookie, okay? Thank you for allowing me to clarify that because people will get, you know, people get high for gluten. Like, oh, I do it this way, I do it this way. Well, you're still making a macaron, um, <laughs> regardless of how you're making the meringues. And if it falls short, it's not going to do well. I yeah. get it. I love it. Yeah. I love, I love the, the, I love macarons. I love how you do that. And how many people come into your shop to get maybe a cake or a pie or something like that? And while they're there, they're like, eh, I might as well get some macarons. I might as well get a couple to snack on on the way home, or I'll just get a dozen while I'm here. How many people do that? All the time. I mean, yeah. and that's part of the reason why the macarons are displayed. It's like a jewelry case. Excuse me. You know, they're there like, oh, I just came in to get a bracelet. You did? You want some diamonds to go along? <laughs> <laughs> no. Whatever. Or vice versa. Right? I could say <laughs> I've probably never done that, but no. <laughs> but no, I will buy like, macarons. <laughs> More like, I came to get an, uh, an engagement ring. Would you like to get a bracelet to go along with that? You yeah. Know, so it's, it's really... Um, it's it's fun with it's fun with dessert and it should be enjoyed guilt free. True dessert should be enjoyed guilt free. So set aside time to really enjoy that and have that moment. Yeah, I agree. My last question for you, and then I'll let you go, Kisha, because I know you want to need to take pictures of your cake, and you're probably going to eat another piece because that's what I would do anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what when you get up in the morning? What excites you the most about getting up every morning to do what you do? I don't get excited enough. I, I know some, that's not um, true because I've seen that huge smile on your face the entire time you've been making that cake. You love what you do, and it's a beautiful I thing. Love, I do love what I do. Um, what gets me up in the morning is the thought of creating something, is the thought of, um, yeah, it's, it's the creation. 
it's uh, the customers that come in and seeing their excitement and think about what new thing can we do today. I think about that, um, the doc this Dr. Seuss book that I still have, though my children are no longer at that age. Oh, the places we'll go. And, and so that's what I think about in the morning. When I get up, I'm like, oh, the places that will go, all the things that will create, or oh, the, the magnificent deliciousness that will be somebody's joy today. And I'm like, yes, let's go. This is going to be a great day. Um, the people I get to meet um, is, is the greatest joy for me. I, I love meeting people. I love hearing about their stories, what brings them in. And so dessert is a way to connect. Um, and create connections with people. So those, th all of those things get me excited, even when it's a tough day. I love that. I love the creative process. I love what you're doing. You definitely have a passion and a gift for it. So thank you for sharing that with us. I want to remind you're people welcome. that they can follow you on Instagram at Hummingbird Macaron. So go there, follow Kisha. And your new website's going to be launching very soon. So when that goes live, I assume I'm going to go out on a limb and make a prediction that people are going to be able to buy macarons and have them shipped to them all over the place. Yes, yes they can. And they can still do it now via Instagram. So okay. um, our link directs us to um, our shopping portal. So all of those things are still up and live on our social media. Um, just our website, because basically um, what we didn't touch real quick is that we did a build out in the middle of COVID-19. And so that was fun. And, uh, and so there was some delays and revamps that needed to happen. And one of those is our website, amongst other things. Yeah. Well, I love I love what you're doing. I love your, your macarons. You have such unique flavor combinations. They're all beautiful. That cake was beautiful. I know it's delicious. Yeah. So, you know, follow Kisha. Buy some macarons for any holiday, any occasion. You don't really need an occasion to buy macarons. They're just good all the time. Just order. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. order them and enjoy them. Yeah. And uh, you're going to get some really, really delicious products made with love. And I think that's the most important thing. Not only are they high quality products, but they're made with love, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I can't wait for our next cooking and conversations. We'll be posting about that very soon. If you're listening on the podcast or you're watching live or watching the replays, thank you very much. Um, keep in touch. We'll have another episode, like I said, coming live really soon. And until then... Go ahead and connect with Kisha and all our previous guests and get in the kitchen and do some cooking. We'll see you later. Bye.